Hey skiers, I'm Jeff from SkiEssentials.com. I'm Bob. Happy Friday. Welcome back to our Top 5 Friday Ski Industry News videos. Um, it's been an exciting week here in Stowe, at least for me. You've for been you. off, off snow for a little bit here, yep. letting your foot heal up. Yeah. Um, but I bet you could guess, but I'm not going to make you guess. This marked a shift for me this season because I've been skiing 2025 skis right like really future not that i can talk much about them yet but yeah it's not even 2024 no i think double that's future always, yeah, skis i think that's always fun yep um we put that powder ski comparison up yep earlier this week that was a fun discussion as it always is i always think the powder skis feel different going through them in that comparison format than anything else well, you kind of mentioned that at the end of the video, like these are the movie skis. Yeah. Like when you see your favorite skier in your favorite ski movie, yeah. that's what they're on more often than not. Yep. Which is just something, it's just like the idolizing aspect of it. Yep. Um, Matt and I revisited that Thunderbird R15 wide body that you and I had a, a very positive experience yep. on. And that, that was two years ago now. Amazing. I know, isn't it? Yeah. Feels like it was last year, but it wasn't. It was two years ago, so I thought that was fun, and and it was also kind of nice to revisit that ski in an on snow format right. after the kind of binding enhancements yep. that it received. So that was fun. Check that out if you haven't already. Turns out carving skis are really fun. Um, and then I know in last week's video, um, I mentioned our snowboard test and how it should be going up <laughs> this week. Uh, it's all it's all but done. Um, I know that sounds silly because you don't see it, um, but yeah, we're just waiting for a couple couple kind of technical things on the back end to to get cleaned up, and then we'll share that. Could be as soon as right before or right after this video goes up. Um, if not, I would imagine that it'll be in the next two to three days. So, may see it over the weekend. May see it today. May see it Monday. Yep. It's a Surprise. Well, I remember having these discussions about the ski test at, in August. Yeah. We were sitting here in top five and we we're like, all right. It always it's happens. Next week, next week. Yeah. No, it happens. <laughs> but it happens. It yeah. happens. They're, they're, it's always hard to get them over that finish line yeah. hurdle. Um, and I don't have anything else. Do you have anything else? Oh, uh, a lot of people commented on the powder ski comparison and were bummed and asked if we could do a touring ski comparison. Yeah. And... Admittedly, I had not planned to do, to do a touring ski comparison. I'd say the biggest reason for that is a time thing. Right. We're getting like, as soon as we get like deep into December, like we are now, um, our day-to-day -day lives are just a lot different with a lot more kind of demand, time constraints and demands. So no promises, but we'll do our best. And I was pointing, I responded to a few comments that like, there's only a few new models. Like you can revisit yeah. our 2023 touring comparison video, and you're going to yeah. get most of the same stuff. Yeah, you also had a funny comment. You were like, "Well, we're already sold out of Draco Freebirds." Right. That's like the one that everyone's <laughs> interested in, and we <laughs> sold out. The new cool ones are <laughs> yeah. already sold out. Um, I wonder if we're getting more of those. I could double check. If, if, yeah. Or people could call if you're specifically shopping for a Draco Freebird. If that happens to be you. Um, give our customer service guys a call and they can look into future shipments. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Okay. Uh, moving right into the week's news, a um, couple ski racing themed highlights to start. First up is our World Cup ski racing recap as we typically always do in the winter months. Uh, and this week is exciting. We got two double downhill wins, one from Michaela Schifrin and one from Bryce Bennett. Um, equally as exciting. I like how in the written article Matt wrote, this is only her fourth downhill victory. I thought that was fun too. Like, she's only won four downhills, as if that's... Not many. Yeah, not right. a lot. And most people couldn't dream of being within spitting distance of totally. even one victory. Right. So if you have one World Cup right. alpine skiing victory, yeah. that's a huge accomplishment. Right. You could like build, literally build the, the foundation of your, the rest of your career off yeah. of one World Cup ski win. Right. 
And she's and she only won four, four downhills. downhills. <laughs> um, so anyways, yeah, speaking specifically to Michaela Schifrin here, um, they were in Switzerland. She was fourth in Super G, uh, not far off the podium at all. Yep. Um, and then a day later, she, she took that win in downhill. And like you said, that was her fourth World Cup downhill win. It was also her 91st World Cup win, period. Getting pretty close to triple pretty digits. Pretty close. Um, and then on the men's side, uh, much more news to report on on the men's side. Um, we had some slalom races in Val d'Isere. We got top 10 finish from River Radimus, which is great to see. And then they moved over to Val Gardena. I can barely read my own writing. Um, for a Super G, a downhill, and then they've got another downhill coming up tomorrow. Uh, Bryce Bennett really stole the show in that downhill, picking up his second career win at that specific venue, Bob. It's a nice home field advantage for him from now on, I would say. Yeah, although I don't know that Italy is where he's from. I know, but you know what I mean. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> Um, and then also in that race, uh, Ryan Cochran Siegel, we haven't said that name in a while, picked up a 14th, and Jared Goldberg was in 18th. And then on the Super G side, kind of flipped. Jared was 10th, Bryce was 14th, Kyle Negomir was 24th, and then Sam Morsing was in 30th. So cool to see four U.S. men in the points. Yep. And that's it, I think. I mean, that's pretty good. Yeah. That's a good spread. Yeah, look at us. United <coughs> States ski racing. Yay. <laughs> We're finally not subpar. <laughs> um, no, they've been pretty good for a while. Uh, and then second topic of the week. This one's a bit of a bummer. Um, Breezy Johnson has been sidelined, Bob. I wrote suspended and then scribbled it out. You can see right there. Right. See? Um, sidelined due to violating the U.S. anti-doping agency whereabouts policy, um, which is a bummer because we like watching Breezy Johnson race and she's got one of the best names in all of ski racing. Um, and this is a bit confusing. I would, yeah, like convoluted at best as to how they go about their, yep. the whereabouts policy and what yep. you have to do and what it means in terms of like testing. Yep. So I'll do my best here, and then you can interrupt me if you ever feel like I'm being <sighs> wildly incorrect. Yeah, I didn't quite get it. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, any, uh, any national level athlete, so an athlete representing the country, they are required to give quarterly updates as to where they are so the agency can issue a test at essentially any time. And specifically, they require a one hour window stating will the, where they'll be on each day. That's a lot. It's, like, I don't know where I'm gonna be every hour of the day, four days from now. In theory I do, but like things happen. Yeah, but you'll probably be with, you'll be within an hour of here during probably these times. No, I, yes, I understand. You know, but like. It, it seems challenging. It seems challenging. The thing that I was, I have a lot of questions, and yep. one of my biggest questions was, can I just tell them I will be in my bed in Hyde Park from 2 a.m. to 3 a.m. every night? Right. Because that's going to happen. Yep. So, pretty interesting. Um, she has missed three of these, or she has three missed test violations over the past calendar year, and now she hasn't specifically or technically been suspended but they did say that this has commonly resulted in an 18 to 24 month ban, although for now she has technically pulled herself out of future races. Yeah, which I don't know if that's like a strategic move from I can, one like can only a assume. legal standpoint, just yeah. being like, I, I don't know if lawyers are involved, I assume they are, but to it, say, all right, remove yourself from this situation, Basically, the equivalent of, of don't say anything. It feels a lot like pleading guilty in hope that like your sentence will be reduced. Right. Of like be cooperating. Yeah. Being like, yeah, I did it. Right. I know what I got to do. Really sorry. She There's, also did put out a statement that she has been a clean athlete her entire career. Yeah, and you want to give people the benefit of the doubt. Yes. I mean, that's 
I think that's first and foremost. I 100% give Breezy Johnson the benefit of the doubt, although yeah. I did sit in her office and say something like, it sounds like Breezy Johnson's <laughs> on performance <laughs> Yeah. But no, I, I mean, I can only chalk this up to just the logistic challenges of communicating that stuff. Yeah. And I don't know exactly what she, like, was she not in the hour? I don't know. Yeah, no, it's no. Real or did she just not communicate at all? Yeah. So. I'm sure people could dig deeper into this and, and answer those questions, so I invite you to do so if you are interested. Third topic of the week, another ski racing theme. I forgot, All right. I forgot that there were three. This one we'll get through really quickly. This is another one that if you're interested in, you could you can dig into this and, and get a little bit more information. But Vail Daily had an interesting report on what happens when an FIS race is canceled and specifically from a financial perspective. So this is a pretty uh, quick summary, um, very high level perspective, not really getting into the nitty gritty details, but Vail Valley Fund is the organization that puts on the Birds of Prey event. Um, and there is some very interesting financial information here. They basically like, the best way I can describe it is they budget for a $4 million investment of their own, which should result in a $3.4 million economic benefit to the surrounding area. Which, okay. is, which is interesting to think about because $3.4 million is less than it's $4 less. million. Yeah. So like, there's some other stuff going on there, and that's kind of what I meant by like, if you want to really dig deep into this stuff, and if, if you like that kind of like, mm, I don't know, specific financial right. businessy stuff then like go for it um, but again high level perspective here in the event of races not happening they end up losing about two hundred thousand dollars of that four million dollar investment it's complicated it is complicated i mean it's it mostly seems like the influx of people spending money in the area is where you see a big jump in the economic impact yeah you know like i think of killington and what they have to do and it's a lot of infrastructure moving and time on the hill yep that's like their investment yep but like they still need to make snow on that trail and they use it all through june you know yep. that's whereas very like true. True. does beaver creek have right another oh. outlet for birds of prey right like, i don't know if they're running I'm sure it's different from events. venue to venue. Yeah. That's, a, that's an interesting point. Um, but you, re you want a real high-level summary here, Bob. Sure do. When ski races don't happen, people lose money. Yeah. I mean... How profound is that <laughs> for, a, <laughs> for a news report? <laughs> um, but no, again, I think it, it was an interesting article. I didn't dig through the entire thing, but I kind of just picked out the, the highlights and, and summaries from it. So, yeah, if you're more interested in the financial... Uh, the, the financial back of ski racing, then check it out. Like, I can't imagine the racers get, you know, like they're missing out on potential winnings. Prize money, yeah. You know, like that's, that's big for them. Yeah. So. Yeah, you, you want a even higher level summary? Sure. It's not great when sport, sporting events are canceled. Right. For many reasons. <laughs> <laughs> Fans are disappointed. Yeah. Um, anyways, are you ready to move on? Sure. Uh, so a while back, I want to say in September, do for, you remember? For when we talked about Wyndham? No, when we talked about uh, Reed Hastings. I don't remember. I remember something about the Netflix person buying Powder Mountain. I didn't remember the yeah. name. Yeah, so essentially um, Reed Hastings, who is the CEO of Netflix, uh, Invested in enough money that he is now the majority shareholder of Powder Mountain, so it can make decisions about the future of the mountain. Yep. And they have announced uh, recently that they plan on moving to a, to a semi-private model um, where certain areas of the mountain will only be accessible to homeowners or members. Your thoughts? Uh, it's a trend. Yeah, I mean, we um, said before that it feels like this is the direction that the industry is moving yep. in for better or for worse. Yeah. 
Uh, I've never been to Powder Mountain. I did a brief look at the trail map and then like a Google map side by side. And the area they're talking about isn't like the bulk of the ski area. Nope. So it seems like it's pretty well cordoned off, I guess. Yeah. Which sounds like the way they want it. Um, at an area like this that's pretty darn big with yeah, more huge. things, yep. I can see the, the, the benefits here more than like more than Wyndham or something that's totally private. Yep. That's like, nope, no one can come here except for extremely wealthy, high paying people. I think that's a good point. I think considering the size and scale of it, yep. it, it could work. Like, what if Stowe said, okay, Spruce is now private? I was just thinking that exact same thing. Yeah. And that would, like, drastically change the experience of the mountain. Right, but it, but you could still go. Yep. You know, like, you, for the most part, your experience there wouldn't... I mean, we like going to Spruce, and, like, for especially for families and stuff like that it would change but at least it's not infringing on like your main usage of the place yeah sure so yep i don't know i think different mountains have different infrastructure that yeah, have different ways of pulling it yeah, off that can that are more or less capable than others yep so you can see it working with like a place like breckenridge someday right like peak six yeah i don't know right section off a peak yeah or like sunday river right you've probably skied sunday river yeah, but not since, like, that Jordan area. Was... Oz? Did you ever ski Oz? No, I wasn't there when I was there. All right, so you're missing out yeah. on the whole looker's <laughs> right side of the mountain, but I could see them. Yeah, I mean, you know, a, a lot of these places work. with multiple zones, Right. I can see that becoming right. somewhat of a model. Imagine if they did that still with the gondola. And sure. You're like, wait, I want to get over there. They're like, yeah, you can't. Sorry. No. <laughs> uh, that'd probably be where they would do it. Right. Still, gondola. I mean, like Sugarbush, like north. Right. You know, like there's just, yep. there's a lot of different things. I mean, Killington has yep. six it's mountains like, plus Pico. Right. You know, like there's. Pico, the private area. Yeah. Yeah. And Jackson Gore at Okemo. You know, right. It's like, I mean, hay, yeah. they did it with Haystack at Mount Snow. I forget what it was called after Haystack, but they made that private. I also, um, I like the thought of uh, people in the future poaching the private oh, yeah. area. <laughs> like, I just think it'd be funny. Oh, yeah. Like, probably traverse over to it from a different lift and sure. then, like, hop a rope and, like, make a bunch of turns. Like, I'm kind of picturing, like, Candide, like, poaching the private zone. Yep. And just ripping and then being gone before, before a, a wealthy homeowner could wave a... Right. Well, they don't have ski patrol. They have security. Right. So yeah. <laughs> kick, kick you right out. Um, so anyways, I thought that was interesting. And then finally, we have our edits of the week. So first, we have Simplicity from Blizzard Technica. I feel like we don't share many edits from Blizzard Technica. It's fun to have them in the mix. Right. Aside from like the Marcus Caston stuff. That's, that's they can watch that guy ski all day. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. Um, and then we've got Lost in Thought from Level 1. Uh, this looked really good. I'm excited to kind of spend more time watching this. Um, opens with a, a very hair-raising crash. Is that the one with the little squeaky scream that I heard coming from your no, side of the office? No, but I'm glad you bring that up because we'll put this in. We'll put that in here as a bonus edit okay. of the week, and then we'll go shame Matt for not including okay. it in the written <laughs> article. Um, but no, next up we have an X Games behind the scenes video. Uh, looking at and telling Lupe Haggerty's story. Um, he is a fantastic skier, someone that I've skied with and honestly probably like competed against at one point in my life. Um, but we've, yeah, we've skied together a handful of times. Uh, really nice young man um, and, and kind of tells his story of, of becoming a, a pro skier and, and finding some success and, and spoiler alert, uh, the glamorous side of Professional skiing is, is not what it's like for most people. No, don't say. <laughs> so, yeah, it's not always just, I yeah. know, it's not always a, a glamorous lifestyle, that's for sure. It's like all those biopics of musicians and yeah, that you just hope that they do great and succeed in everything and yep. they don't. Yep. 
Um, so then we've got the trailer for Census. Um, this is from The Bunch. Uh, this is widely regarded, at least among the free ski park community, as the best ski movie of the year. Um, it is not free. This is just the trailer. If you're interested in renting or buying this movie, you will go to thebunch.tv. I believe it was $8.99 to rent and $10.99 to buy, so you should probably just buy it. I'd say buy. Anytime I'm like renting a movie on Amazon, Amazon Prime, they yeah. get me with the buy. I'm like, well, $2 more and we'll yeah. own Cool Runnings. You'll have it forever. I don't know if I bought Cool Runnings, but it felt like a good example. It's online. Do you own Cool <laughs> yeah, Runnings? It's cool Runnings. <laughs> it's a great movie. I mean, I feel like everybody should own Cool yeah. Runnings. Right? My Cla kids don't like it. I they don't, don't like it? They don't like it. Are they too young? I don't know. It's just not in their wheelhouse at this point, I guess. They might be too young. What's your favorite scene? Uh... I mean, obviously, when they carry the sled across the finish line. Not the bar fight. My favorite scene no. is the bar fight. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe when he tells off his dad. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's a good one. Yeah. Yeah. I really liked that movie as a kid. Uh, still do. But I really like... I know it's, like, based on a true story, so you can't change the, yeah. the movie. Uh, too much. I'm sure it's not all the details. I'm sure aren't reflected of of real life. But so that watching that final run is tough. Darius yeah. was really on it. They were going fast. Just things happen. Bummer about that sled. Yeah, I never found like John Candy to be a believable bobsled coach either. I'm curious. Yeah. So like, what they mu it must come up in the movie. What's the like the What's the duration of time in between him being like an elite athlete and that character? Like I don't 20 know. years? Maybe. Either way. It's hard to see that transition. Yeah. And he was just such a kind of a character actor at that point that it was hard to right. get from Uncle Buck to. Why are we talking about this? Oh, right. The Edits of the week. <laughs> the increase in how much it costs from renting to buying. Ah, okay. Um, and, and getting back on track here, um, the bonus edit of the week is episode 16.3 of Line Traveling Circus, which I was watching while I was eating my sandwich. Okay. That's what you That's, that's what, what I what heard. heard. Yeah. So check that out, too. Um, love watching those guys ski. Always, always gives me a lot of feel-good vibes, partly they, because they're all friends of mine. They also just look like they're having like the most fun in the world. They, they, I think they do. Yeah. Spec Andy Perry might have like more fun on skis than anybody else. Yeah. That's a good accomplishment. Yeah. He's a great guy. Um, so that's it. Hope everyone gets out on snow this weekend. Um, I will not be out on snow very much this weekend. I'll be over in Maine, so if you're in southern Maine, just wave. Wave randomly. Randomly, and maybe <laughs> you'll be waving towards me. Um, and yeah, got some exciting stuff planned for next week. I don't remember when we get to start talking about future skis, but pretty soon. Not too far in the future. Yep. So look forward to that. And yeah, we'll talk to you soon. Bye.